as the old saying goes. It's not the dog in the fight, it's the fight in the dog. So Dave, I got your email about Mike Tyson and I don't know how I feel about it. It seems weird you're using the word beauty and Tyson in the same sentence. But anyway, I do get what you mean about writers and artists and fighters and their attention to detail. But you make him sound like he's some kind of candidate for redemption. And, you know, it reminds me of that conversation we had about violence and you stopped me talk, saying the word violence in terms of boxing. So if language is so important, what is the difference between, you know, the word brutal and the word violent when you're talking about boxing? The way that I look at it, even someone like Mike Tyson is a candidate for redemption. Why shouldn't he be? I can see the problem with using brutal or violent in a poetic sense, in a literary sense. But that's basically my intention. When I think about boxing and its connection to the literary arts, I think about the brutality and the violence of fighting, but also the brutality and violence of writing. Norman Mailer, who was no stranger to the boxing ring himself said that uh, writing was competitive sports and for me I think that's where boxing and writing collide or coincide so thinking about or, I don't know perhaps unjustly comparing brutality with violence as if there is some difference I guess what I would say is that, to me, violence is a physical thing. It's about the physical act of destruction. Whereas brutality works on a far more philosophical level. You can be psychologically brutal, which is part of the art of boxing. And I think part of the art of writing, the brutality in writing is in honesty truth, raw, uncompromising okay. textual ability. <laughs> as a writer, boxing gave you the opportunity to live up somehow, as though writing was not enough for you. And I know that for artists like Richard Lua, it's about discipline and training. And these are very similar things that he has in his studio and his art practice. So what is it for you that attracted you to boxing and what do you think are some of the similarities between art and the fight? Boxing and writing are both very lonely pursuits. A lot of what's going on on the page and in the ring is really going on in your head. I think that's why I had a desire to combine the two and why many writers who have discovered boxing have been captivated by it. I used to talk to guys in the gym about why they boxed and the interesting thing is a number of them would say, well, it's just something to do, isn't it? That's what writing is like. It's something to do. If you can do it, then you do it but you do it in the way that, I don't know, people do other things in spite of themselves. It's, uh, it's not really a vocation I've come to find, it's an affliction. The best part about writing, like boxing, is that sense of achievement. The two years and two months that led up to the, you know, less than 20 minutes that I was actually in the ring, in some ways it gave me the grounding, and it gave me a, an immense amount of background and information about why boxers do it, but it was in that, that very short period that I really learned why men fight for a living. 
Something a bit dangerous there with the head. Right, so I get that this is an all-in endeavour. And, you know, Bianca Elmer, and she's a professional, she talks about having to find this kind of inner crazy within herself when she steps into the ring. And, you know, what is it and what made you flick that switch on? What made me flick the crazy on? That's a good question. I grew up in a very tough part of London's East End. Tough but not rough. You know, I didn't live in fucking alleyways or anything like that. I wasn't homeless. I wasn't a drug addict. I wasn't a loser. I just came from a very tough working class family in a tough working class part of London. And to survive that, not in some existential way necessarily, but just to survive the daily grind of living in an environment like that. You have to, you have to have an inner crazy. I think that's why so many people from those sort of uh, environments, you know, are, <laughs> they're a bit touched because you're faced with a lot of daily microaggressions and then overt aggressions. So I think it was always there. It's not to say that, you know, someone who's middle class or upper class can be a fantastic boxer. You know, boxing history is littered with gentlemen fighters or those from the upper echelons of society who have done extremely well for themselves. You know, fighters like Muhammad Ali or Sugar Ray Leonard, they didn't come from bad backgrounds. <laughs> Certainly nowhere near as f***ed up as where Mike Tyson came from. But if you've learnt privation, if you've learnt deprivation through your upbringing, yeah, you've got the crazy in you. So you get into that boxing ring and you can tap into that. That's for sure. I'm not even sure if I'm really answering your questions. 